Hello, welcome to another tutorial by Longhorn Physics. In this tutorial, we want to talk about free fall or free falling. So here's a sample problem. You have an apple falls from a five meter uh, tree. How long does it take the apple to hit the ground? And we're going to assume we're on Earth here, so we're going to use gravity at 9.8 meters per second squared. But before we solve the problem, let's go over the equation and the symbols and units that go with the equation for calculating uh, how long something takes to hit the ground once it's in free fall. To calculate uh, how long an object uh, stays in the air in free fall, uh, we use uh, one of the three kinematic equations that we talked about in previous tutorials. So we got d equals the initial velocity times the time plus one half a t squared. And for working in the vertical direction, we have a little subscript y here, and then an object in free fall uh, has an initial velocity of zero, and we know the acceleration due to gravity for an object in free fall is uh, g. So if we do some substituting here and some uh, rearranging, we can figure out how long an object stays in the air by using the equation square root of 2 times dy divided by gravity. Now let's talk real quickly about what free fall actually means. Free fall occurs when an object is pulled down towards the center of the Earth by the gravitational force of the Earth or any other large gravitation uh, body. Let's break this down. A force is just a push or a pull on an object, and a force can cause an object's velocity to change. You know, gravity is a force that causes any object with mass to fall down as well. Gravity is a force that attracts objects together, and gravity is 9.8 meters per second on Earth. Expressed as a vector, it's negative 9.8, meaning downward. Um, so on Earth, this force attracts everything to Earth. So let's go over all the symbols uh, that go with the equation. Uh, T squared to dy over g. You know, T is a... Uh, seconds and d is going to be distance so that's going to be in meters gravity is meters per second squared and again it's always good to know the units and the symbols uh, very well this way it makes it easy to solve your problems and figuring out how to organize your data and substitute correctly into the physics equation you need to solve the problem so let's finish off our calculation now that we have the correct equation we've gone over the units I always like to use what's called the circle label method to help me organize my data. So the 5 meters tells me that that's distance and long. i to be careful with that. That's not a distance, that's time. And then here's our gravity, G. So it looks like we have all our data that we need to uh, solve the, the problem. So once I multiply 2 times dy, and our dy is 5 in this case, so that's 10, and we're going to go ahead and divide that by 9.8. And when you're punching these out in the calculator, it's not a bad idea to keep the top part in parentheses and then take your square root at the end. So we end up with approximately one second. So this tutorial um, is part of, a, of my book called My First Physics Book of Motion. It's a 153-page book that's designed for uh, students new to physics um, from high school to collegiate level. Uh, it makes sure that you uh, learn the fundamentals and terminology units has problem solving uh, and problem solving skills. So you show two different methods there uh, for solving problems. Uh, the study guide takes a hands-on approach, has many interactive tables, worksheets, and mini quizzes. And then, of course, uh, you see how this is referenced uh, to the book. It's available at starstudyguide.com or straight at, at amazon.com. I guess typing these keywords will help you find it. But if you go to starstudy.com, so the two ways there, you can link to Amazon. Uh, if you think you want to see more about the book, 